Hey, it's Dave from CG Shortcuts. Today, we'll see how we can speed up our Cinema 4D workflow with a 3D Space Mouse. This tutorial was brought to you by CG Shortcuts Pro Membership, where members get access to Cinema 4D, Octane, and Redshift courses, project files, models, materials, discounts, and even a private Facebook group, as well as lots more. Become a member today and take your Cinema 4D skills to the next level. Visit cgshortcuts.com forward slash membership. Now let's get back to the tutorial. So I finally got my hands on a space mouse and I've been using it for the last couple of weeks to see if it could speed up my workflow in Cinema 4D. So I just wanted to do a quick review and share my experience with you if you're looking to try one out yourself. For those of you who are new to the world of space mice, they're famous for their unique six degrees of freedom control which allows you to pan, zoom, and rotate smoothly and effortlessly around your scene with your non-dominant hand. So at the same time, you can still use your mouse, which in theory means you can work much faster and navigate your 3D scenes with much more ease and a lot less work with your mouse and keyboard. I've got the Space Mouse Enterprise model, which also comes with a load of customizable keys and an LCD display. But all models feature the 3D controller. So let's see how we can use it in Cinema 4D. To install it, you just need to plug it into your computer via USB, although they do offer a wireless version as well. Then just install the drivers from their website and you'll then be able to use your space mouse in almost 200 different applications. So if we hop into Cinema 4D, normally if we wanted to frame up a scene like this, we would need to scroll in using the mouse, then using a combination of the mouse and keyboard, we can get things into position. But if we want to be super precise with our framing, it can be a bit tricky because the scroll wheel moves in pretty large increments. We can use these tools up here though for a little bit more precision. But if we try to zoom into smaller objects in our scene, like these flowers, for example, at some point the zoom increments become huge, which makes positioning the camera really difficult. We can use the tools here again, but just rotating around this small object is going to be a bit of a pain. And I'll need to play around with this for a while to get the exact shot I want with the mouse and keyboard combination. But let's try this again with the space mouse. I'll zoom in again, and straight away you can see how much smoother and easier it is to frame up on this. And I can be as fast or as delicate as I need to be to precisely get this exactly where I want it. And if we want to get a shot of that flower, I can zoom over there and easily try some different angles in a very smooth and intuitive way. And using the space mouse is actually fun. I can fly around my scene like it's a video game and really explore for interesting camera angles, which I'm definitely a big fan of. And you can see how much time this is actually going to save you. So let's take a look at how this actually works. If I push forward on the controller, we move forward and the harder I push it, the faster it'll go. Then pulling back will take us backward. Then we can strafe left or right by pushing this to either side. And we can pan from side to side by twisting the controller like this. We can also bank or roll the camera by tilting the controller to the sides. And finally, we can pull the controller upward to move upward or push it down to lower the camera. So with just one hand, we can combine all of those motions together and freely move around our scene. So without much effort at all, we can find the framing that works for the shot, or just zoom around and work on our scene. So let's take a look at the hotkeys that come with the Space Mouse Enterprise model I have here. First, we have the Delete key, which does the same as it does on the keyboard, but we've then got these camera bookmark buttons. So with our camera in nice and close up like this, if we click and hold this button, we can bookmark that. Then if we zoom out to more of a mid shot, we can click and hold the second button to bookmark that as well. And finally, if we pull out to a wide shot and do the same with the third button, now that we've got those stored, at any time we can click each one of these and go straight back to that saved camera angle without the need to have several different cameras set up in our scene, which is quite useful. Then we've got a button down here that will switch to the front view. Or if we click and hold that, it will take us to the opposite rear view, which isn't particularly interesting in this scene. So let's click this button to take us to the top view, which again can be flipped to the bottom view if we hold the button in. And we can go to the right side view, 
or hold this down to switch to the left side. Then this button rotates our view like so. And we also have a lock button that will lock the controller if you don't want to accidentally change the view. And we've also got an isometric view of our scene. And finally, a fit to scene button, which should work when we're zoomed in to quickly zoom out so we can see our whole scene. Then up here, we've got our customizable shortcut keys and LCD screen, which we'll take a look at in just a second. We've also got a duplicated set of common keyboard buttons, which you might find easier to access while using the controller like so. But let's hit this menu button down here and take a look at some of the extra driver settings we can customize. And these settings will change depending on the software you currently have open. We're currently looking at Cinema 4D settings and shortcut keys. But if we cycle through the different apps, these options will change as you can see. But let's take a look at the Cinema 4D settings where we can firstly adjust the speed or sensitivity of the controller with the master slider here. Or we can go into the advanced settings and over to the speed tab where we can adjust the speed of each axis individually or tweak some of the other navigational settings, which you can customize to your liking for each different application. And what's really cool about the Cinema 4D integration is the different navigation modes we can use in here. I usually have this set to target camera mode, which is what we were using for the little demo we just had. But let's take a quick look at these other modes as well, except for the object mode, which for me was just really difficult to control because it kind of just reverses the direction of everything, which I didn't really like. But camera mode is quite cool. It basically just lets you look around your scene as if you were looking through a camera, which can be pretty handy for framing up your shots. Then there's helicopter mode, which is kind of like looking through a camera mounted to a helicopter, which is great for zooming around landscapes and getting aerial shots. And we've also got walk mode, which is really fun because it lets you walk around your scene like a video game. And you can even go up and down stairs as well, which is really cool. So this would be great for architectural shots or for finding unique camera angles as well. And if we close this and check out our buttons menu, here's where we can customize all of our shortcut keys if your Space Mouse model includes this feature. So we could change all the key functions that we looked at before, as well as switching the keyboard keys. And these ones here correspond to the 12 hotkeys shown on the LCD screen on the Space Mouse Enterprise. And you can see if I switch between apps, the shortcut keys on the display will also switch to whatever keys you've got set up for each software, which is really cool. And in Cinema 4D, we can also make use of the radial menu feature that is also available via the Space Mouse, where we can pick our favorite tools and add them as an extra menu assigned to a shortcut key. And we've got a few pre-built radial menus, including the Create Mesh menu and the Deformer menu. And we can make our own by clicking this option here. But let's take a look at how that works in Cinema 4D. If I click the Mesh Radial Menu hotkey, we can see all the tools within that menu popping up around our mouse pointer. And to pick any one of these, it's just a matter of moving the cursor over the one we want, like the text object, for example, which is automatically added to the scene. And we could do that again and add a sphere by rolling over that. Or again, let's bring in a cube. And it's as easy as that. And we can also access deformers with the deformer menu as well, which is another cool little feature. The Space Mouse is also super handy in ZBrush and makes navigating around much more intuitive. And it also worked great in Substance Painter for texturing models. I also tried it with Daz Studio, but it was a little bit jerky and not quite as smooth as it is in Cinema 4D for some reason, but I'm hoping they can fix that with a driver update. But other than that, I've really enjoyed using the Space Mouse Enterprise and will definitely be incorporating it into my workflow. So you'll probably see it in action in our upcoming tutorials. So hopefully you found this video useful. If you have any questions about the Space Mouse, if you're using one or you're thinking of giving one a try, just leave them down in the comments. That's it for now. I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching. If you found this video useful, give it a like so we know what to make next or just let us know what you need help with down in the comments. Don't forget to smash that subscribe button and click on the bell to be notified when we post new videos just like this one. You can find loads of CG training, assets and resources on our website, cgshortcuts.com or become a member to access exclusive premium content.
that's it for now. Here's a few more videos you might like.